Well, we're four weeks out from the NFL draft, and you would think nothing is going on. Most of the pro days are over. We dump the All-Star games in the Combine, but really it's getting more interesting behind the scenes right now. Well, it really is, Rob. And as the pro days unwind, these organizations are coming back together in terms of putting their final draft board together once and for all. And there's really four major aspects or components of those meetings in terms of with the general manager and the head coach going through a format or agenda to make sure that all four areas are discussed and that's what we're going to get into today and number one is people often forget that these players all had grades come out of the fall so the scouts fall grade to me has always been the backbone of your final evaluation so that's really important in terms of when you're trying to put this formula together to get to one final grade from your organization. So scouts grades from the fall, number one. Number two, the measurables. And those are the raw numbers from the combine, the pro days, et cetera. You're looking for these numbers to either verify or confirm the things that your scouts saw from the fall. And when I say fall grades, I'm talking about the school visits, the games during the fall, but then also the all-star games, such as ours here at the Reese's Senior Bowl. So fall grades from the scouts, number two, measurables, number three, coaches' input. And this is really important for those organizations that made a coaching change, either at the head coach level or coordinator level, because now they're putting in new systems. And so the scouts have to adjust their thinking, and then the coaches come and say, hey, this is the type of player we're looking for. This is why this prospect can fit what we're doing. This is why this prospect cannot. And so now you have to measure what the coaching staff brings to the table in terms of that final grade. And then the fourth, and certainly not the least, is the medical. And of course, we hear a lot about that at the combine. Of course, the players that have uh, situations that are ongoing go back to Indianapolis for a recheck at the beginning of April and then for the players that are not at, invited to the combine those are sometimes part of that 30 player visit that the club each club has in terms of bringing a player in and putting him through a physical examination to make sure uh, you're hiring or drafting ultimately a player that's healthy but those are really the four major areas that the general manager and the head coach have to bring those four pieces of the puzzle together and say, hey, this is the final grade on player A, B, and C. And as I noted earlier, most teams have a horizontal board, meaning by position, quarterbacks, running backs, all the way across the board to defensive line linebackers, and then they have a vertical board where it's essentially best available regardless of position one through about 120 players or so is all you need to get through a 256 pick draft, believe it or not. See, what if all 120 players have been selected and you're sitting there in the seventh round? Were you just pulling names in, out of your pocket? In, in, <laughs> in my 20 years of being in the NFL, we actually had a list of 150 and we continued to whittle it down to the point where ultimately we felt like we only needed around 110 or 120 and believe it or not, after the first round and a half or two, these 32 teams go flying all over the map in terms of players we never ran out of players really? to take even through a seven round draft remarkably. Well, we're four weeks out and uh, those boards are being built as we speak. Next week, three weeks out, what are we talking about? Three weeks out, we're going to talk about the game plan and how you put it together for the first round, the second round, and the third round. That is next week right here at SeniorBowl.com.